I recently got this astrophysics paper published in MNRAS, which is one of the top three astrophysics journals. Of course, this is part of my PhD in astrophysics and when I posted about this on the channel, people wanted to know more. So in this video, I'm going to explain what we discovered in this paper in such a way that anyone can understand it. So let's begin. Hello Genesis, I have a question for you. When you think about astronomy, what comes into your mind? Vast space, stars, galaxies, aliens. Astronomy is the study of everything beyond Earth, all the things that we see in this universe. And astrophysics is where we go a step deeper, using physics and maths to understand how these cosmic objects work. And overall, we are trying to understand the inner workings of this universe. Now look at this image. This is a deep image of this universe. And in this image, each dot is not a star. It's a galaxy. So here in this image, if someone asks you, what is the universe made up of? You can say small, small galaxies. So galaxies are like the building blocks of this universe, like small Legos coming together to make this whole universe. Now, what is a galaxy, by the way? A galaxy is a vast collection of stars gravitationally bound. And most galaxies, except dwarf galaxies, have these stars circling around a supermassive black hole. Apart from stars, these galaxies are also surrounded by a halo of gas called the circumgalactic medium, as the name suggests, the medium surrounding galaxies. Now, this is important since this word is in the title of the paper. And this medium acts like a fuel to galaxies. It essentially controls how a galaxy evolves with time. And hence, if you want to understand galaxies, you need to understand the circumgalactic medium. So from the universe to galaxies, and now we are at the circumgalactic medium. And till now, how this CGM exactly behave, what state it is at, etc, etc, is not yet fully known and it is a topic of ongoing research. The biggest difficulty is that we can look at stars, we can look at matter, but gas how do you observe something invisible and study it and which is so far away from us? And that's why its complete picture is not yet known and people are trying to understand it completely through observations, simulation and theory. They are trying to understand how clumpy the gas is, how it interacts with the galaxy and many other things. Now the next question is, how did we contribute to this? For that, let's come back to the supermassive black hole at the center of galaxies. In some galaxies, these black holes are very, very active, meaning they are rapidly eating up a lot of matter. And when matter falls into the black hole, it cannot like directly fall. It needs to circle around the black hole and slowly lose the energy to fall into it. And this happens because like matter has angular momentum. And this circling around the black hole forms a bright disk around the black hole known as accretion disk. You must have seen this bright disk around the black hole in interstellar movie. This is the accretion disk. Now, in case of these active black holes, this disk becomes very, very bright so bright that it outshines its host galaxy. Like the brightness of that disk is greater than the brightness of whole galaxy. And these types of galactic centers are called active galactic nuclei. It's like a giant engine at the center of galaxy producing enormous amount of energy. And these galaxies where this nucleus is so bright it outshines the whole galaxy are called quasars. Now the question that we ask in this paper is that, what is the difference in the CGM of galaxies which contains this active nucleus versus those who does not? In simple terms, the CGM of normal galaxies versus quasars. But as you know, there is a really big challenge here. Stars are easy to study. You can look at them through telescopes. But how do you study gas that is so far away and essentially invisible? Astrophysicists have developed some really cool, clever techniques and one of them is absorption lines. To help you understand what absorption lines are, here is a simple analogy. Suppose you have a jar of hydrogen gas and you shine a torch behind it. And after that, you put a prism. Then you will see a rainbow-like thing. This rainbow-like thing is called the spectrum of light. And on this spectrum, you will find dark lines called the absorption lines. Now think of hydrogen as a lock. Only specific wavelengths of light can open that lock. 
So when the light is passing through the jar, the hydrogen is absorbing only specific wavelengths of light and then re-emitting them in all directions. And due to that, only at those specific wavelengths you find dark lines because there is no light to it. Hydrogen absorbed it and then re-emitted in all directions. So in the direction of where the light was going, there is less light in that wavelength. And due to that, absorption lines appear in the spectrum. And now the cool thing is that these absorption lines are unique to the element. Like hydrogen only absorbs specific wavelengths, carbon would absorb some specific wavelengths, etc, etc. So these absorption lines are like the fingerprint of that element. So whether this jar is on earth or in the edge of the universe, these absorption lines would be the same. Now think of galaxies like this big jar of gas. Now if we have something bright behind them, and if we observe that light, take its spectra, we'll find these absorption lines which are coming from the gas in that galaxy. Then from these absorption lines, we can study that gas so distant. Now the question is, from where do we find such really bright torches in this universe? You already know the answer, quasars. They are so bright, powerful. You can observe them literally from the edges of the universe. They are so bright so they can act as torches as well. So here is what we do. Suppose there is a quasar really far behind a galaxy. We can observe the light from the quasar using a telescope, take its spectrum, and since that light has passed through the circumgalactic medium of that galaxy, the spectrum of that quasar would contain absorption lines coming from that galaxy. And using these lines, we can study the circumgalactic medium of this foreground galaxy. In our work, we focused on a very specific kind of absorption line, absorption lines coming from singly ionized magnesium, Mg2 absorption lines. Why only magnesium? Since it traces the cold gas of circumgalactic medium and its absorption lines have a very distinct doublet-like feature which is very easy to identify in spectra and like work with it. Now when we see an absorption line, we can measure something that is called the equivalent width of that line. Simply the strength of that line. The more the gas the light passes through, the more this strength is. So yes, using this technique, we can study Mg2 gas billions of light years away. This is the power of scientific thinking and these critical thinking skills, the ability to come up with clever ideas can be learned, which simply brings us to the sponsors of this video, Brilliant. Brilliant is an app which is based on an idea that we learn best by doing. In research, being good at math and computer science is extremely important. And Brilliant helps you build those skills. It has interactive exercises, not simple but deep thinking like problems. And also it adjusts to your level of thinking. From coding to graph analysis, you learn by actively thinking not just passively watching. And it also gives you detailed feedback like what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, etc, etc. So simply, Brilliant helps you bring out the real scientist in you. To learn for free on Brilliant, scan this QR code or click the link in the description. Brilliant is also giving our viewers 20% off on their annual subscription, which simply gives you unlimited access to everything on Brilliant. So have fun learning. Now let's come back to the video. Now we have all the machinery to do the analysis. We needed two samples, one in which there is a galaxy at the foreground and a quasar at the background acting like a torch. And second, there is a quasar at the foreground and again a quasar at the background acting like a torch. In both the cases, there is a quasar at the background, but at the foreground in one sample, there is a galaxy and in the other sample, there is a quasar. Now we can study the light coming from those background quasars, look at the absorption lines, measure their equivalent widths and see if there is any difference and that would tell us like if their CGM is different or not. You might ask like are not there scientists who have already done this and yes, this has already been done but as new surveys come, new data come, we have like much better data and larger samples. So we did like a very controlled study on this. So what did we find? Did we found any difference in the absorption lines of these two? And the answer is no. And this is much more interesting than a yes. Even after carefully matching the galaxy masses and the other factors, 
the mg2 absorption lines in both the quasar sample and galaxy sample were statistically the same this is a little surprising like quasars at the center of galaxy produce huge amount of light and winds so why they are not affecting the mg2 clouds in the circumgalactic medium in the paper we discussed many reasons one is we were studying strong mg2 absorption lines like they have higher equivalent width and these comes from thick clouds that can shield themselves from the radiation coming from the quasar and these quasars also form a torus like thing around them which shields the radiation coming from them in one direction that can also be one of the reasons it is possible that weaker mg2 absorbers are affected but for strong mg2 absorbers both quasars and galaxies essentially behave the same and this basically was the main result of this paper and this is how by sitting here on earth we can learn about objects far far beyond our reach and unravel the mysteries of this universe this work is the result of collaboration with professor raghunathan shriyanand the current director of ayuka pune professor humchand he is my phd supervisor and dr labanya kumar guha he is a current postdoc fellow at indian institute of astrophysics and of course this video is a very simplified explanation and now i encourage you to go read that paper and i think you will understand the technical details much more easily now So thanks for watching this video do tell me in the comments what you understood and what you did not do you also want to pursue research if yes then in what field and always remember that math is everything